Today, there are two airplanes that dominate the light amphibious aviation market. And although these airplanes are more alike than not, it's very rare to see them together in the same space. Quick backstory. In the 1980s, engineers in Florida designed an airplane that could conquer land, air, and sea. And that plane was known as the Buccaneer. Then in the 1990s, two new companies designed airplanes which kept the Buccaneer's legacy. And those two airplanes became what you're seeing right now. So let's take a closer look. This airplane is known as the Aero Adventure Aventura 2. And this is the Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray. And until today, they haven't been flown back to back for a true flight comparison. With the help of Alex at Aero Adventure, we're going to see the differences between these two airplanes, which are in a fierce competition with the other. And to keep it fair, we chose two brand new top of the line models. Both airplanes are powered by around 115 horsepower engines. Both have upgraded interiors and both have Garmin glass avionics. They both have electric trim, electric flaps, and electric landing gears, and both are built for adventure. So let's take it over to Alex for more info on each airplane, then we'll take them up for a flight to go have some fun in the water so you can decide which airplane wins. Then stick around to the end of the video for a more detailed walk around of each aircraft. This is the Aventura 2 versus the Sea Ray. We picked both of these airplanes because they're comparable in weight um, and performance. So we really wanted to get apples to apples comparison, which is sometimes difficult because most of the Aventuras, they're gonna weigh in the 800 pound range. Some are, are big, breaking 900. Um, the newer Sea Rays tend to be closer to the 1000 pound range. So we really wanted to give apples to apples here. So this Aventura is actually one of the heaviest ones we have. Um, it's about 1040. Um, this Sea Ray weighs 1,028 pounds as it sits. This aircraft has the 914 turbo Rotax, whereas this one, we went with the aero momentum on it so that it would have about 117 base horsepower. So they would be comparable uh, being the AM15 and the 914 in terms of performance. This is fuel injected and this one is carbureted. This one has a turbo, this one does not. So there's a little subtle differences there, but in terms of weight and, per and uh, performance numbers, they should be fairly on par. They have every option you can, you can throw at them. So you got this one being the elite model, this one sold last year for right around 189, and this one is little, little under 120,000. Um, also a 2020 model. We're looking to really give you a side-by-side -side comparison today, uh, give you an idea of what you're getting for your money, right? Because there is, at the end of the day, between a 60 all the way up to, if you go with the kit style, almost a $90,000 difference. So back to what are you getting for what you pay for? We'll be able to show you that today. Um, this aircraft here, being the Aventura 2. The kit starts at about 50,000, 49.5. It takes 250 to 300 hours to build. It's a little simpler construction method on the wings especially, and the uh, flight surfaces, the control surfaces, so that, that lends itself to being a little bit of a faster build process. The Sea Ray is um, over 60,000 for their kit, and um, it does take, close, a little, I would say, a little over 500 hours to build this airplane, um, if you know what you're doing. thing about this setup with especially with this engine is um, you don't have to do anything once everything's on so really the only switch I'll need to touch after I take off is the gear and the flap so right here that's it none of these unless you know obviously whatever these I need accessory wise but these three always stay on takeoff and landing so it's kind of user friendly in that regard all I did was check make sure both fuel pumps are working okay we're good so that's really all there is for a run up all right so I'm just gonna talk you through it basically we're going to ease into power, which allows us to stay down the center line. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll remove my feet off the brakes, and I'll use the rudder to keep me where I want to be on the center line. The tail's up. Now we're just flying down the runway. We're already at flying speed, so I can just take off. Oh, man. A lot better of a climb out than the planes I fly. Yeah. And I mean, I could do that a lot sooner too. I just wanted to walk you through the steps. So, now we're just climbing out. So we were off the ground right before crossing the other runway. 
Oh yeah. That's yeah. like that that looks like 500, 400 feet almost. Yeah, it's probably about four. And like I said, this plane will get off the ground, especially with just being in at 250 feet. Performance-wise, it's it's already set up for like a short field, you know, kind of airplane. Yeah. Um, and both the C Ray and this are, are very similar in that regard. So we'll go ahead and bring the gear up. So that's all we do. Now the lights are off, meaning, you know, no, we can't land because the gear's up. Now it's unsafe for either landing because the gears are unlocked. The okay. gears will start moving up, as you can see. Once they reach their position, this blue light, the red light will turn off, and the blue light will come on. There we go. Yeah, we're burning just under five gallons an hour right now, probably about 4.8, 4.9. That's very good. Yeah, if we're over, if we're at 52, 5,000, which will put us, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 85 plus miles an hour, then that's where um, we'll be burning over five, about 5.2 or so. Yeah. Uh, but with the 23 gallon tank, I mean, we can go just about anywhere. It's shown we have 18 gallons right now, which is comparable to the C-Ray. It's actually three gallons more than what the C-Ray has, so. And then you got your wing bug. Yep. Information. So that's your angle of attack right here. Okay. Which is right now we're going pretty fast. It's a little bouncy, but it's pretty much neutral as you can see. Okay. Uh, we're showing about 77, 76 miles an hour. We can do knots. You know, oh, cool. just tap it for knots. We can change your altitude and altimeter based on the barometric pressure, which they're set to about the same. The true airspeed right now is 79, well, 81 miles an hour. Or a slight descent. So I'd say it was about 79 miles an hour. There we go. At about 47 to 4,800 RPM. So very. Very good, you know, for, for an amateur especially. Yeah, you know, but really for any seaplane, so. We're just going to back off power, establish a rate of descent, as you can see. I mean, I don't really, I'm not manhandling anything. It's it's a very stable platform. Um, that's the trick, you know, there's, there's really no reason to, to man, manhandle it. <laughs> yeah, I can feel you making this small correction oh, yeah. the rudder. The rudder really is what I use to, to correct or, you know, put my nose where I want it. And then now we're set up to come in and land. So all we have to do now is just bring her down low, level off, it'll bleed off the energy, and it'll be all set. Little ripples in the water helping you out here. Yeah, that's why I wanted to come over here so we have some perception. Right. You know, which is going to be basically give us the idea of where the water is. Oh, man. So now we're on the water. We're going to bump up a little bit of speed just to stay on step. So, as you can see, I don't need to hold anything. I'm not, I'm not manhandling anything with the stick. I'm pretty much just using the rudder. If I want to really steer drastically, I'll use cross control to keep the sponsons from bearing. Yeah. But there's not much else I have to do here, so this is all there is to it. We're on the water. <laughs> this is beautiful. We're going to back off the power here. All right. There we go. We're off a step. <laughs> That's all there was to it. So cool. So now to take off, we're just going to give it, we have the 10 degrees of flaps in already. Okay. A little bit of cross control there, get that sponsor light. A little bit of back pressure on the stick. And we're going to get in the throttle. So right now we're basically coming up onto a step. There we are, we're on a step. We're holding a little back pressure to control just that little bit of a porpoise. And that's it. So now we're transitioning from being, an, uh, being a plane. Now we're going to being, uh, I'm sorry, a boat. Now we're going to go to a, being an airplane. So all I have to do now is I can break the suction by pulling back like that, or I can put more flaps in. You feel the uh, the acceleration as soon as you leave the oh, water. Yeah. You feel it change right when the suction breaks. That's, that was really interesting. So that's all there was to it. So we backed off power because we don't. We're just flying around low, obviously right. over here. So. Now this is such a nice type of flying. Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. That is one thing about the aperture is I've seen way more engine options for the aperture, or at oh, yeah. least at least people trying different engine options. Now your 80 horsepower to 114 or 115 horsepower road taxes. I've seen the 110 Viking to the 130 Viking. The nice thing about these engines, though, also being both Viking and narrow momentum, is you get a lot of technology for not a lot of money. Right. So, like with the road taxes, we're dealing with carburetor engines. They have the IS, but that's also weight, you know, has extra extra weight, and they don't push any more horsepower. Yeah. Whereas with this, I'm getting the 117, I'm getting the fuel injection, you know, I'm getting computer-controlled ECU data. And there's no warm-up. I, I, I didn't mention that on takeoff, but we weren't worried about the 120 degrees on oil temp that's or anything. Right. It was just like a car. You start it, then you move this, just like your gas pedal, right? Do you mind if I see what a, a slight turn feels like? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay. All yours. I remember it's almost all with uh, rudders. 
we get a lot of airline captains that retire and want to get into this kind of flying and they're not used to using the rudder, so that's, that's the only learning curve really is to get comfortable with being, especially a tail dragger, um, yeah. as well as a, a rudder dominant airplane, they're, they're not really used to that. So here, if you don't mind, I'll take it for a second. All right, you're you know, So if I wanted to bank, bank left, I could easily do a roll like that. And then if I wanted to bank right, same thing. So you can see, I mean, it rolls very easy. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of input needed, you just have to be, you have to know the plane, right? So yeah. it's, it's a little heavy, but we, we tell it what we want it to do and it does it. Like we mentioned before, one of the reasons the Aventura in general usually weighs 100 to 150 pounds lighter than, than the Sea Ring is because of our wing construction. We have a little bit more square foot, uh, but also it's a very light control surface. So you're putting up an aileron and there's a lot of resistance on that. Whereas with the Sea Ray, they have the freeze aileron, so that dips down, you know, and pulls the, that wing down. So it makes it a little bit lighter on their, on their control surface on the stick laterally. So just to give you an idea here, I mean, we're getting bumped around, but we're at 4950, we've been there for a while, and true air speed's about 84 miles an hour, so we're not really climbing or descending. So another, you know, obviously we now have wind coming out of a different direction. So generally, like we talked about earlier, anywhere 5,000, you're going to be anywhere between 83, 85. Yeah. Um, 5,200, you'll probably be able to do 85 to 90. And then anything below 5,000, you're comfortably 75, 80 range. Yeah, so... All right, so we're going to bring our gear down now that we're entering the downwind. And then really the only thing to do after that is going to be our flaps if we need it or we want them. So gear is down and locked. And we're coming in for landing. All right. Yeah, you can do a nice uh, closed circuit in this plane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll put a little bit of power. That way I can control my descent rate. Start pulling back on the stick. It'll level off. And then now we're flying down the runway, right? So I'm going to pull out power just to bleed that off. And we're down. Nice. So I'm not using any brakes yet. I just pulled out the power. We don't have any flaps in. So we're just using basically letting the speed decay off the runway here. Um, but this airplane, it, it, the gear legs are very springy. So the Seamer runs a thicker gear leg. Um, I wouldn't say thicker. They're actually, it's larger in diameter. Same um, thickness, okay. uh, wall thickness. Uh, okay. Same 4130 chrome motley steel gear leg, but theirs is, is a little bit more robust. So most of their shock absorbencies in the, uh, the tires themselves. So as you can see, I can turn it right on a dime. Okay. So even taxing all the way down here, oil temperature is still about 115. So. We're going to do a run-up because this one does have the independent um, coil packs or magnetos, for lack of better words, it's, so we'll check that. Now, is a canopy optional open or close? Or, or yeah, so normally we'll bring it to right here, okay. um, which will give us a little bit of a, a vent, and then once we go for landing, we'll close it all the way. Bring it about right there. All right, you all set? I'm set. All right. Do this. Tails up, we got power in. Start flying speed. There we go. We're up. Yeah, we're about the same, you know, altitude from where we were earlier. Yeah, that thing from a, you know, once we get it trimmed out, it's pretty much hands off, just like the Aventura. They're both stable in that regard. Yeah, and you do, you definitely do sit a lot lower. If the Advent chair, you get a little better of a side picture. You can see the yeah, part of the nose. I can't. I can't. Yeah, you have really to really sit up to see over the nose. Yeah. Yeah. The other dash is a little higher in terms of where you sit. I think we're we're sitting much lower in this airplane than the Aventura. And of course, you can adjust the height. I'm a short person, so obviously I prefer the visibility. Plus, yeah. we don't have all this right here going on because the windshield right. carries all the way up, so we're not having to worry about any obstruction of visibility here. So it really gives you an open feel. All right, gears up for water. Those two indicate that the, all three gear are up. But we can physically see that the uh, with the spot with the mirror out there, I can see that the tail wheel's up. So okay, so we're doing 85 miles an hour right now, maintaining altitude 84, 85, and 49, 60, so about 5,000 RPM. Yeah, yeah. very similar as the um, Aventura. You can feel it's kind of heavy on the stick in comparison to the aileron roll. It's a lot more lighter in this airplane than the Aventura, but the stick is a lot more heavier. Whereas the Aventura, it's the opposite. Right. <laughs> We'll go ahead and close our little doors here. Okay. A little bit. There we go. 
And just close it all the way under. There we go. So the only other thing we do in this airplane for the landing approach is being able to turn on that second fuel pump for, you know, the backup. I don't okay. need to run it because we got plenty of fuel pressure, so I'm just going to leave it off for now. But when we go back to the airport, we'll run it for landing. So same concept, plenty of speed. We're just going to get low and let it bleed off. Water landing okay. <laughs> check gear okay. position for landing. Oh, it's a little late to check gear position for landing, check our lady. Check gear position for landing. Can you hear her through your headset? Yeah. Check gear position. So now we're on the water. Okay, yet. Yeah. You do sit a little lower in the sea ray, that's for sure. Yeah, yep. And I mean, they're going to be comparable with the weight, but yeah, the sea ray has less buoyancy because, like I mentioned before, their nose is eight inches shorter just there alone, right? And very yep. similar in the, in the design from a spatial perspective. Cool. All right. Ready for takeoff? I am ready for takeoff. Same concept. Just power, a little bit of back pressure. Try to do its trick. There we go. That was me. So now we're just letting it fly off. I'm bringing Bantam full pressure down a little bit for the pitch. We got flying speed, 10 degrees flaps. So on the sea ray somewhere, we just pull back. Or we can use flaps if we want to. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, very similar, very, very comparable, both planes. No, it, it's funny, it's, it's as if you took the exact same requirements for an airplane and had two different people build it. Yep, exactly. It's almost the exact airplane in, in many yeah. ways. The only difference that it boils down to is just the price tag, like I mentioned yeah. before. You know, this, this cost $189,000 back, you know, less than a little, little over a year ago. You know, whereas you can get the same airplane uh, in terms of performance numbers, um, for 60 grand less. Right. Are, are there big differences between the actual airfoil on the wing and between the the yes. and the Aventura? Yes. So they do have different airfoils. Um, one of the one of the major differences is, isn't so much the airfoil as it is the the Sierra has a tapered wing. Right. It does have a little less square footage, and what that allows for is uh, obviously a little bit faster speed, which is where they they get that difference from. Um, so, and then of course, less affected by thermals and stuff, because you have less, less lift, less drag, it's not as draggy, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but that's where it lends the Aventura to being a shorter takeoff, you know, shorter landing. We go into tighter lakes, smaller bays, rivers, etc. And it, obviously there's a lot more to be seen. You know, if we go down and do water handling, if we go down and do, you know, step taxis, and we go docking, and we go up a boat ramp. But that's where you can go for a demo flight and actually get exposure to all of that. Right. Uh, this video is really intended to just showcase, answer a lot of those uh, high-level high questions that people get in terms of, well, what are the main differences between the two? And I think this video will showcase exactly that, that there really isn't that much big of a difference yeah. other than price and a few other small details. When I realized the type of flying, the freedom you get with being able to land there's no more airport to airport. I go anywhere. Right. Right. So when you when you realize that, it just opens up a whole new world for flying, and it, it really sucked me in because I had been flying 172s, and in my opinion, I'd never go back to after yeah. experiencing something like this. Right. So you know, Sea Ray, uh, Aventura, all of these really open up a whole new world for pilots. Uh, for a little power. All right, we'll bring the gear down. And now we just wait for the landing where it says down, left and right. There we go. So now it shows land. Okay. Um, so both lights are on, showing that we are down and locked, ready for land on uh, on asphalt. So this one, because uh, Sea Ray is uh, notorious for a tailwheel shimmy, uh, because they did design their own tailwheel uh, and a few other variables that I'm sure is involved there, um, it tends to want to land three point. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that to avoid the shimmy. If I do a wheel landing, it'll shimmy as I let the tail down. So okay. we're going to avoid that by doing the stalling it in essentially. Plenty of energy, so we're just going to let that bleed off. Traffic. One way landing, okay. There we go. Oh, there's a shimmy. Check gear position for landing. That's a little late there, buddy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Check gear position for landing. Very nice. Good job. For landing. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Alex. No problem. So I wanted to highlight some of the options uh, that we offer on the Aventura side as well as the Sea Ray offers on their side. So you can kind of see how 
They both have them, but they may be a little different. Uh, but this way you can see what those look like. So on the Sea Ray, if you look at the interior, I'll, I'll step away. We're going to have plenty of shots of that anyway. We have, this has the, um, the upgraded interior, as I call them on the, on the Aventura side, but it has the nice seats, the center console, the panel. This has glass in the panel. And then back here is where your cargo capacity is. Now, you're limited because of the, the structure uh, here in the center, but this area back here and that area on that side is where you would put whatever it is you want to carry with you. So with the seat forward, you can you very difficult to see the fuel tank in this because they got a lot going on, but that's because they're running dual motors. They have one motor per side and hence the circuit breakers on the panel. You can operate one wheel independently of the other. This does add a little bit of weight because they're carrying one motor breach. Now the motors themselves are, don't need to be as strong either because of they're running. Obviously, they're only pushing the one tire worth of buoyancy down into the water. So it's very fast because of that as well. The gearing's a little different. This has the landing lights, which are three LED lights here on this uh, a quarter inch thick metal plate here. Now they aren't adjustable, so they, they're fixed from the factory. You can't move it. It really doesn't move around. So in terms of being able to land at night, I'm not sure how good they are. I haven't tested them, but these are the landing lights that they've supplied with. It does have a little tie down ring, which is sometimes nice. Uh, pitot tube, this does have angle of attack built into the pitot tube, which is an option obviously with the garments. Uh, the, the wing bug also does supply the pedostatic information as well as uh, angle of attack, so redundancy there. If we go around, this has the freeze ailerons, which is a really nice feature um, that I like, and that's what lended itself to being a light roll characteristic. Still heavy on the elevator, but a light roll characteristic is because they have a very similar surface in reference to being light. It's also less square footage, but it's effective because this part that drops down below the very bottom of the wing is what gives it that freeze aspect. So the wind pulls it pulls this down and goes up through here and that's what gives you your effectiveness of your aileron so a lot less roll input required to yield a good result on the aventura side similar we have a much larger nose as we talked about earlier so we have eight inches more which gives us that extra stability and buoyancy in the water so that's one of the reasons as you noted we sit a little higher um, in the water but this hatch just Big opening here is where you have access to your battery as well as all your avionics for your glass cockpit. Very similar to that. Uh, we do have a little bit more room to put ballast up here, but then again, that's only if needed. Um, if we come over here, as we showed on that airplane, you can see the interior itself has got the upgraded interior as well. Very similar. Um, you got the center console, side panels, the seats, cushions themselves, easily removable for cleaning. We have tow brakes, which is a really neat feature. That one requires the brakes on the, on the throttle. It does not have a tow brake option. This is running, uh, you have the option for dual tow brakes. This one's running them just on the pilot side. But we have the Behringer wheels and brakes, which are very effective. If we move the seat forward here, you can see you have plenty of visibility into your fuel tank um, there. And then you also, we're running one motor, which is why you don't see, we have a retract bar, but it's under the center console. And that gives us 2,000 pounds of force, which, which allows us to put these larger tires and wheels down in the water. Um, this has a flare assist on it, which is a radar altimeter, calls us down from, from 50 feet all the way down to the water. Uh, full load of sponsons, just like on the Sea Ray. This is where the wing bug would mount. I have power ran out to the wing bug on this one, just so that we don't ever have to worry about charging the battery on it. Landing lights, now these are adjustable. So you can move those as need be. They're set for, obviously we, we take them out at night and make sure that they're positioned accurately for somebody if they found themselves coming in later in dusk or whatnot or intended to land at night, these would actually function. Uh, we have five LEDs in this one, so it's very bright. Um, and there, you have one on each wing. You do not have the freeze aileron. So as you can see here, this is just in line with the trailing edge, goes up, down, etc. cetera. So um, similar connection, push pull tubes all the way throughout, going back to the back. Back here, we do have inspection panels, which make it really nice to look back in your hull. The CRA does not have that, so you have really no way to see what's going on back there. You just have the drain plug to drain the water. We don't really need the drain plug because we have the bilge pump at the lowest point in the hull. So that allows us to bilge out the water anyway. And you can clearly see behind the seats. So if there is any water back there, you'd be able to take that out, no problem. But back here, we can open these and vis visually inspect anything uh, airframe wise back here. So for corrosion purposes or anything else, if you feel uncomfortable, you can always look in there, part of your pre-flight, post-flight, whatever you like. Um, engine, this one it does have the air momentum on it, AM15, which is why we use this aircraft because one, uh, the weight and two, the power, they're very similar. Um, and obviously we saw that in the numbers then when we were flying. So similar back here, we actually have a trim tab. Um, so that, that's a visible option. Well, it's not an option, it's standard, but th this has electric trim, which is an option. So this aircraft, as you see here, it's identical to our SLSA other than the engine. So in fact, it was built to the same standards and when we build the parts themselves, they follow you know, shop travelers, etc. 
So we just we decided to go with the experimental side just because of the engine doesn't meet ASTM standards. But this aircraft as a kit, you can get for under $100,000. So this airplane, as we flew today with everything in it, would still cost you under $100,000. Um, as a built airplane, SLSA, they start at 120. So if we go over here to this one, you're looking at $189,000 um, with everything that you see on it as well. So just to give you a, a price cost difference, you're somewhere in the neighborhood of anywhere from 60 to $90,000 more on that side than you would be on ours.